Please listen very closely to this story about a place many of us visit. I call it Woe Island, the place where sorrow and distress thrive. And it kind of goes like this. I wasn't planning on taking a trip this time of the year. I knew nothing good would come of it, yet I still packed my bags. I'm talking about my annual guilt trip. I got tickets to fly there on Wish I Had Airlines. I got my baggage, which I couldn't check. As I carried it, I couldn't help but notice how the thousands of memories of what might have been made it incredibly heavy. No one greeted me when I landed at the Regret City International Airport. As I checked into the last resort hotel, I noticed that they were preparing for the annual pity party. I knew everyone would be in attendance, especially my friends from the Dunn family. You know, should have done, would have done, and could have done. Mr. Missed Opportunity will be there with his wife, Mrs. Lost Opportunity. The Yesterdays will be there well, along with the Shattered Dreams family and the Regrets family. I'm certain that Mr. It's Their Fault will be there sharing his adventures with his best friends. Don't blame me, and I couldn't help it. Maybe one day I will realize that this trip to Regret City and the annual pity party can be canceled by me. We all must choose to leave the city of regret and not provide a forwarding address. Cancel those reservations and instead opt to visit a new place like the city of new beginnings. You'll love the cozy little neighborhoods like I Forgive Myself and the New Starts neighborhood. And maybe you can stay in a five-star hotel on I Can Do It Street. It doesn't matter if you're starting from scratch or starting over. Every day you get to choose your travel destination. The destination you choose today will shape your tomorrow. What is good, Stackers University? It feels so good to be with you and share some of my thoughts about this idea of starting over or even starting from scratch. I just can't be the only one that looks back on life and thinks about some of the financial decisions I've made along the way, only to end up saying things like, I wish I had started earlier. I can't believe how much money I wasted on X. If I would have just blank. The reality is, we don't get do-overs in this world and we simply can't unscramble eggs. This means we can either look at the bowl of scrambled eggs and lament over how they could have been used to do something like sunny side eggs or fried eggs or poached eggs, but regardless, that is no longer an option, which means all we can do now is make something different. Breakfast isn't ruined though, it's just going to be different and we have to make the most of it. Maybe we make an omelet, those are delicious, scrambled eggs with cheese, heck, and use them to make French toast. My point is we all have options and we don't have to let regrets and what could have been negatively influence what we do going forward. What started me down this road was an email received from a viewer about how he lost everything in a divorce and was starting from scratch. Well, my friend, as I've shared on this channel, I too had more than I could have ever imagined and lost it all during a divorce as well. The topic got me thinking because believe it or not, there's a very important lesson in this for all of us. We don't have to take an annual, monthly, weekly, or even daily guilt trip. As I discussed at the beginning, we don't have to fly into Regret City on Wish I Had Airlines. There are better places to stay than the last resort hotel, and we definitely never need to attend the annual pity party with all the self-condemning attendees. I think every one of us can relate to the regret of wishing we had started buying gold and silver earlier. It almost doesn't matter when someone started or how much they've accumulated to a person. We always look back and say, I could have, I should have, I wish I had. And too often we view starting over or starting from scratch through the lens of having lost everything or just starting on our journey. Instead, I want to remind you that every single day, every day we get to start from scratch. We get to start over again. We get to make decisions today that are independent of what we did yesterday. This means today we are empowered to make better financial decisions that allow us to stack more. As someone who has bought and sold gold and silver over three decades, let me tell you, for the most part, as long as you are adding gold and silver to your stack, you're not making a mistake. I know there are lots of videos about the best gold or silver to stack right now. Heck, I've even done a few of those videos from time to time. In the big scheme of things, as long as you're adding ounces to your stack, you're making a good decision. In fact, there are only really four of mistakes you need to avoid, and they actually aren't typically what comes to mind. Not like, you know, avoiding high premium items or collectibles or buying when the price is right or even worrying about buying too much. The first mistake is buying while carrying consumer debt. You simply can't preach that gold and silver about protecting your purchasing power or storing your wealth when you're making yourself poorer every day. Since 1972, you can count on gold and silver appreciating around 8% annually, while your debt is costing you 20%. If you feel that you need to stack while still carrying some consumer debt, 
you at least have to have a clear and aggressive plan to get yourself out of debt while still stacking. This means sacrifices must be made and every dollar is to be used for necessities, paying off debt, or buying gold and silver. No dining out, no, you need to start packing your lunch, and bye-bye streaming services, and you know what to do. The second mistake that we must avoid is kind of this broader category of what I call buying wrong, which is really about who you're buying from and is what you're buying really gold and silver. Lord knows I love a good deal, but more and more I hear stories about people losing countless dollars on fakes that they bought from random people on the internet in particular. As silver and gold becomes more valuable and popular, there will be a significant increase in counterfeiting. And as I see it, it only takes one fake gold coin or fake tube of eagles to ruin your stack and erase a significant amount of your gains. A while back, I watched two women have their hearts broken when they came into the coin shop only to realize they had a bunch of fakes. So buying who you buy from and make sure you're actually buying gold and silver, that's another mistake that you just have to avoid. The third mistake is having unrealistic expectations of gold and silver. Gold and silver are like the tortoise racing the hare. They're not gonna go out and win any sprinting contest for you. They're not gonna out sprint stocks or other investments, but they are slow and steady pace. That is what allows them to be the winner in the end. There will be highs and there are lows, but your patience is rewarded like slow cooking a brisket. Mmm, yummy. Oh, anyway, I need to focus. The physical metals are your big picture, long-term investments, and short-term evaluations are just simply going to cause you to make impulsive and even bad decisions. So you just have to have realistic expectations for what gold and silver do. The fourth and final mistake is going all in on metals. I believe gold and silver are one of the best places to invest your money or to put your money. And at the same time, metals are just one vehicle and you simply need more than one investment vehicle. Let me give you an analogy. During the summer in Aspen, Colorado, having a convertible sports car is probably a wonderful thing. But I bet you it sucks in the winter when there's snow everywhere. So you better have a second car that can handle that particular type of weather. The fourth and final mistake is going all in on metals. I believe gold and silver are one of the best places to invest or put your money. At the same time, metals are just one of the investment vehicles, one of the asset classes you have to have. You, you have to have more than one. Let me give you a, an analogy. During the summer in Aspen, Colorado, having a convertible sports car is probably a wonderful thing. But I bet you it really sucks in the winter when there's snow everywhere. So you better have a second car that can handle that particular weather. Your investments are like the same thing. You have to have more than one asset and they need to balance each other out. It doesn't matter if you have thousands of ounces or you're about to buy your first ounce. Every day we get to start from scratch and make the best decisions possible when it comes to building our tomorrow. This means we have to, one, begin with the end in mind and ask ourselves, why am I buying gold and silver? And then two, what's my overall strategy and approach? What am I going to base my decisions off of? What am I looking to accomplish? And three, what's my specific strategy? Is it gonna be all gold, a mix of gold and silver, a mix of gold, silver, and mining stocks? And how much dry powder I'm gonna keep on the sideline for protection or for opportunities? Starting over or starting from scratch, regardless of the reason, doesn't sound like a lot of fun. But what we can't do is book a trip to Regret City on Woe Island for an annual guilt trip to attend an annual pity party at the Last Resort Hotel. There is a better place to visit called the City of New Beginnings, and you can go there every day if you choose. As long as you make sure you avoid those four major mistakes that I just covered, you'll be amazed by what you can do when you have a plan and a strategy, regardless of where you are on your stacking journey. If you think what I shared is interesting, you should click on this next video where I walk you through how I would go about investing $10,000 in gold and silver. But before you do that, in the comments, what's your biggest regret or mistake when it comes to stacking? What advice would you give a new stacker or someone that was starting over? Or simply put an A plus in the comments to let everyone know that you always stack smarter and never stop learning. <laughs>